Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In the last video I looked at the various Windows 10 install methods available to an administrator. In this video I'll perform a clean installation of Windows 10 Enterprise onto a computer that has no operating system installed whatsoever. In this video I'll use a Windows DVD as my install method, but the install process itself is very similar, if not the same, when using alternative methods. By the end of this video you'll be familiar with the Windows 10 installation process and will be comfortable in performing your own installs. So let's get started. Before I change over to my computer and install Windows 10 Enterprise, I'd first like to raise an important point. Before you install Windows 10 onto any computer or device, Microsoft recommends that you first check that your computer hardware has the latest firmware updates installed. In particular, you should check that the firmware for your motherboard is up to date and that your BIOS version is the most current. The reason why Microsoft suggests this is because of product activation. When you install a copy of Windows 10, you're required to activate the software. Activation is usually accomplished by entering a 25-digit alphanumeric product key, but can also be achieved via a digital license. Regardless of how you do it, activation ensures that your copy of Windows 10 is genuine and aims to cut down on software counterfeiting. Another reason for activating Windows is to ensure that your copy of Windows has not been installed onto more devices than the license permits. This is all very well, but what does product activation have to do with firmware upgrades? To understand this, consider the following. Imagine that you have a computer. You, as the administrator, decide to install a copy of Windows 10 onto this computer. This copy of Windows 10 is a retail copy purchased off the shelf. As such, the operating system comes with a product key which permits just one install. So you install Windows 10 and activate the software using the product key. So far, so good. However, you then realize that there's a firmware upgrade for your computer's hardware. So you download and install the firmware. This is where the problem comes in. When firmware, in particular motherboard firmware, is updated on a computer that already has an installation of Windows on it, sometimes the firmware update is so significant that Windows is fooled into thinking that the hardware in the computer has been changed. Although this is not the case, this causes Windows to fall out of activation because the operating system believes that it's been activated twice on two totally separate computers. By upgrading the firmware before you install Windows, you're effectively eliminating this problem. It's worth paying a quick visit to your motherboard manufacturer's website to ensure that you're running the latest firmware before you install Windows 10. Having made this point, I'll now change over to my computer where I'll perform the clean installation of Windows 10 Enterprise. Since I'm installing Windows 10 using a DVD, the first step is to insert the Windows DVD into the computer's optical drive. If you're planning to install Windows 10 using a USB flash drive, you should insert this instead. When the computer is powered on, it will immediately detect the Windows DVD and will prompt you to press any key to boot to CD or DVD. When this prompt appears, simply press any key on your keyboard. If this prompt doesn't appear, you may have to go into the computer's BIOS and modify the boot order setting so that the optical drive is listed as the first bootable device. After pressing a key, the computer will then start to load the contents of the Windows DVD. This should only take a moment or two. Once loaded, you'll reach the first of the Windows setup screens. The first screen allows you to select your language, your time and currency format and your preferred keyboard layout. When answering the questions, select the options that best matches your geographical location. Since I'm in the United Kingdom, I have selected English and United Kingdom for all the prompts. When you're happy with your selections, click Next. The next screen is a simple one. From here you essentially have two choices. The first choice is to install now. 
This option will allow you to perform a fresh install of Windows 10 on this computer. The second choice is Repair your computer. You would only use this option if Windows is already installed on this computer but won't start up. The Repair your computer option gives the administrator access to tools that can help troubleshoot a problematic installation. Since I want to install Windows, not repair it, I will click Install Now. At this point, Setup will start to load the next portion of the wizard. This should only take a matter of seconds. When Setup comes back, the first thing we have to do is agree to the licensing terms. If you do not agree to the licensing terms, you cannot install the operating system. As I'm installing Windows 10 Enterprise, I'm being asked to agree to the terms and conditions outlined in my Volume Licensing Agreement with Microsoft. If you're installing a retail version of Windows 10, your licensing terms are likely to be different. When you're happy with the licensing terms, tick the checkbox I accept the license terms and then click Next. The next screen asks us what type of installation do we want. Here we're required to make a selection. The first option is Upgrade. This option allows you to upgrade an existing installation of Windows. If you have a computer running either Windows 7 or Windows 8, you are able to upgrade that installation to Windows 10. Since this computer doesn't have an existing installation, I have nothing to upgrade. The second option is Custom. The Custom option essentially installs a fresh copy of Windows 10. If you have a computer that has no operating system installed whatsoever, as in my case, this is the one you want. A word of warning though, if your computer does have an operating system installed and you select the Custom option, you could end up overwriting your existing operating system with a clean installation of Windows 10. This would cause you to lose all of your data, so be very careful to pick the right one. Since I don't have an operating system installed on this computer, I will select the Custom option and will move on to the next screen. On this screen you are asked where do you want to install Windows. The screen requires you to select the hard disk and partition where Windows 10 will be installed. As you can see, I just have one disk in this computer, Drive 0, which has a total capacity of 100 gigabytes. If I had multiple disks installed in this computer, these would be listed here as Drive 1, Drive 2, etc. Currently, the hard disk has no partitions on it, which is why all of the disk space is currently showing as unallocated space. Unallocated space is essentially disk space that has not yet been allocated to a partition. If you plan to use all of your space on your hard disk for your operating system, you don't need to worry about creating a partition. In cases like this, Windows will create a partition for you that occupies all of the available space on the disk. If, however, you don't want to use all of the disk space for your operating system, you are required to partition the disk. When you partition the hard disk, you're essentially breaking the hard disk up into separate units of storage. These units are called partitions and can be independently managed from one another. Whether or not you partition your hard disk is simply a matter of preference. Some administrators like the idea of creating a partition just for Windows and will store their data on a completely separate partition. To partition your hard disk, simply click the New link. You can then choose the amount of disk space in megabytes that you want to allocate to this partition. Personally, I'm not a fan of partitioning a hard disk that has an operating system on it. I would much prefer to have my operating system use all of the available space on the hard disk and would prefer to store my data on an entirely separate hard disk altogether. So I'll not bother to create a partition and will cancel out of the options. When you're ready to install Windows, click the Next button. Setup will immediately begin copying the Windows files and will start getting these files ready for installation. A typical installation of Windows 10 takes around 10 to 15 minutes if you're using a regular mechanical hard disk. On solid state disks like mine, the install time is usually halved. Nonetheless, the process does take a number of minutes, so I'll fast forward the video so we don't have to wait.
Setup has now finished getting the files ready and will start the process of installing features and installing updates. Once finished, Setup will require a reboot and will restart the computer automatically after 10 seconds. When the computer reboots, it will start the process of getting devices ready. This process doesn't take too long, usually no longer than a couple of minutes. When it does finally complete, you will be presented with the Get Going Fast screen. The Get Going Fast screen allows you to change settings related to customization and privacy. Take a moment to read this screen as it explains what the default settings are. For the majority of users, these defaults are generally OK. To proceed, you essentially have two choices, either use the Express settings or customize the settings. If you use the Express settings, you'll be accepting all of the defaults as they're described here, whereas customizing the settings allows you to amend the settings as you see fit. For now, I will stick with the default options and will use the Express settings. After a short wait, Windows will apply your choices to the computer. The next step is to create an account that you can use to log on to the computer. There are two parts to creating an account, choosing a username and a password. In the Who's going to use this PC box, you're required to choose a username. In my case, I will type my name, Will. But you can name your user account anything you want. The next set of boxes under the Make it secure heading are for the password. In the first box, I will enter a password, and in the second box, we'll confirm the password. Entering a password twice helps you to ensure that a password hasn't been mistyped and will prevent you from locking yourself out of your own system. Of course, when choosing a password, be sure to include a mixture of upper and lowercase letters, as well as numbers and even symbols. The last box is for a password hint. This is essentially a clue as to what your password is. The idea behind the password hint is that if you were to forget your password, the password hint would try to jog your memory. Of course, you shouldn't make your password hint so obvious that anyone else could guess your password. Password hints should be both informative, but still vague enough to keep hackers from breaking into your system. When you're ready to continue, click Next. The final part of the setup is a matter of waiting whilst Windows creates a user profile for your account and sets up the various apps that can be used with your computer. This can, in some cases, take a number of minutes, but I'll speed up the video so that we don't have to wait. At the end of the process, you'll be presented with the default Windows 10 desktop. Having reached the desktop, I can safely say that I've created a perfect installation of Windows 10 Enterprise. Well, that's it for installing Windows 10. I hope this video has been of some use to you. And don't forget to check out our YouTube page for more Windows 10 videos. And remember to subscribe to our channel to be notified of future videos when we release them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.